We are Snowbird Nation. Hey, welcome to Snowbird Nation, a lifestyle connection of resources to designing lives. What is a snowbird, you ask? Well, a snowbird is a person who travels south or west during the winter months in order to escape northern weather and obtain partial relief from the high cost of northern area taxes. So snowbirding is that act of traveling and living part of the year and spending part of the time in southern and western areas to enjoy the beautiful climate and all the south and west has to offer, while at the same time avoiding the harsh polar vortex that may be coming in the winter weather of the north. Feel free to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, podcast, YouTube, Vimeo, and elsewhere, for we are Snowbird Nation, and I am the voice of Snowbird Nation, Mike Searcy. Welcome into the show. This is episode number two of The Nation. This is Snowbird Nation, and of course, that is the voice sitting right across from me, Mr. Mike Searcy. Mike, yes, I am. Glad to have you on. This is going to be a good one today. This is exactly what we alluded to in the first episode. Now that people are actually thinking about, yeah, I think I want to be a snowbird. It's that time in my life, whether you're a millennial or a retiree. Yes. What do I now need to do to get started? And specifically, what do I need to do? And Mike, you've put something together on that vein. I do. In fact, um, I am prepared today with what I call uh, Mike's top 10 hints for snowbirding. And so one of the things we're going to go over is just what are we talking about in terms of snowbirding and what are the 10 top things we need to prepare to spend part of the year down in one of the great states like Arizona and part of the year uh, back in your home state closer and closer to family. So let's go ahead and get started with those if we can. What do you think, Jason? I think this is a great idea, and I love the fact that you've taken the time to put this together because there's going to be some stuff out there. I guarantee you our listeners are going to say, oh, I really never thought about that, or yeah. where do I go to get started? Okay, so the first uh, first point out of the 10, uh, find a great real estate advocate. Mm -hmm. um, and I'll tell you what, you've got to feel comfortable with whoever it is that you find and somebody that you trust so you can lay your cards out on the table and say, you know what, whether I'm looking this year or next year or the following year, I need to actually spend some time with a good real estate advocate, a real estate agent who is both seasoned and professional, who understands the market. And so one of the things that we need to do is to make sure that we have professional help because whether you're looking for a manufactured home, whether you're looking for a rental for the first couple of years, you need to keep track and keep in touch with somebody who's going to be your advocate all the way through and even maybe alert you during the middle of the time when you're in your home state for something that's coming up on the market right then, right now that you know is going to be perfect. And don't worry if you're not going to move in right away because quite frankly, in the good areas specific to snowbird states, the five that we, we mentioned, lots of people are coming here so you could even rent it seasonally or off season as it were. Yeah, and one of the great things that we can also uh, tell you about is that we are both licensed agents, and of course, you can get a hold of Mike. And we'll talk more about that in the private setting, and so if you're not a member yet, you're going to want to definitely become a member, and we'll tell you how to do that at the end of the program. But yeah, Mike, you can actually be sending information over. Our team can be sending information to wherever you are, Canada, Wisconsin, Chicago, whatever, Absolutely. about what's coming available and how to make the moves on it, so when you are ready to come down you can be ready to see some properties. So we, uh, we're we not just radio people. We actually know what we're doing in the real estate market. How about number two? Find a great financial team in the new location. See, if you're paying cash for a property, that's usually not a big deal. But you know what? It's important to start a relationship with a good banker. And there are some bankers that we are connected with that can actually do loans, for example, if you're not paying cash, that can do loans in all 50 states. And that's important because you can keep that relationship alive, even from your home state, your home territory, all the way to here. And so that makes a, a really good move. Now, just kind of a heads up, if you're going to pay cash in the state of Arizona, you don't get to write an offer on any property whatsoever until you have what we call that ticket to the show. Right. And that ticket to the show is one of two things, either proof of funds if you're paying cash, which means make sure that you have in essence and, and ready, ready to hand to your agent, your real estate agent, 
an actual piece of paper that shows an, your account and enough money in that account to cover the cost of the entire purchase. If that's not the case and you want to actually put something together with a loan officer, in the state of Arizona, there's a, an official form, an Arizona pre-qualification form that if we don't have, we don't write the offer. And there's an awful lot of bankers and lenders out there all across the country who haven't got a clue on what that particular form is. Yeah, and we've seen so much after the crash, 2008, 9, and 10. Regulations have tightened up. So again, it's a one-stop shop here on the nation, but that is very, very important when you're ready to make that move. Number three, consult your tax advisor. Let's face it, I am not an accountant. I am not a tax preparer. I know where my lane is professionally. And as such, it is important if you're going to spend part of the year in one state and a part of the year in another state, it's very important to determine where you're going to take advantage of your tax uh, base, what's, where you're going to call your homestead, and which state are you going to actually be able to take advantage of with respect to saving any money on taxes. So this brings up a good point. This kind of falls into what you talk about a lot with uh, being a chief real estate advocate, yes. the due diligence on doing all of this. You've got to know what the costs are coming in taxes. You're going to need to know what it's going to be costing to manage this. You bet. All of this fits in, but this is really a big one when you're looking at an area of the country that you're, you're considering because some taxes are much, much higher in other places than others, and you want to make sure that you're going to the place that you can afford. I absolutely agree. You bet. How about number four? Number four should be kind of a mixture of both fun, excitement, and a little bit of business. And I call this take a business vacation. Sit down over a cup of coffee with that real estate advocate that I was talking about, number one, in the location that you wish to migrate. So if it's Arizona, call us. We'd be happy and excited and absolutely delighted to sit down over a cup of coffee with you. And if that isn't possible, have a face-to-face -face meeting over the internet. Um, manage those expectations and communications specifically so that you feel comfortable and, and that person can help you feel right at home in that area. So we talked about this in the last section. Yep. You know, you're going to want to know where are the things that make you feel comfortable. For example, in Arizona, is there a White Castle and are you attached to White Castle? Are you interested in Portillo's or good Chicago pizza? They can be found, and you kind of want to know where they are because it's going to make a difference as to perhaps where you want to live when you're in this area. So take a business vacation. No, I love that. See, you you got to know what you're going into, and you have to know where some of those comforts of home are just in case. And, and the flip side of this, we sure have seen this before, Michael. Sometimes people want to come in and just have a totally different transition for six months. That's very easy, too. Yes. All right, number five, mail. You know, savvy individuals will have mastered the art of things like online banking and online transactions for all of those kinds of needs. So there's an awful lot of people in the United States now that have gone green. We've given up the entirety of receiving mail from financial institutions and the like. Oh, and the paperless movement, yes. Oh, and you know what? I'll tell you that there's an awful lot of people out there, you know, my mother included, who refuses to go paperless. Mine is the same way. She has got boxes upon boxes of papers. Mm -hmm. I got to dig that, Mike. It does yep. crack me up. Auto pay, <laughs> not going to happen. No. Not with some people. No, we've got a checkbook still, and she still writes the check and yeah. puts it in the mail. So what are you going to do for six months out of the year, or four months, or three months, however you're gone however long you're gone what are you going to do with the mail that's coming to that particular address that you're leaving vacant you know we've got to make sure that we're not just forwarding the mail let's face it postal workers are human too right and they might make mistakes and you might wind up getting mail delivered and the more that it stacks up and piles up the more it alerts to anyone in the neighborhood driving by that your house is vacant and has been vacant for some time so we need to make sure that we have somebody, a service or a neighbor who's really well versed in what you're doing and what your schedule is. Because let's face it, there's a lot of those even free papers and those free flyers and things that are delivered. You don't even know. You can't stop them because you don't know they're coming. Right. So we got to make sure that, that that's taken care of. This really goes into keeping your property secure, both where you're coming from and where you're going. Yeah. So And, and there'll be a lot more information we do in future shows about that. Mm -hmm. Number six, home watch. And home maintenance, mm -hmm. and I'm even going to say pet service. Sure. You know, for six months, some people are willing and will insist, of course, on taking their pets with them, their dog, their cat, whatever. And that makes perfect sense. But what about that tarantula, that lizard? What about the, the bird? You know, things that there are some pets that just don't travel well. Right. 
And so have you got somebody who's going to actually pop into the home or even make sure those pets are fed and taken care of and played with, et cetera, and have their recreational time? So that's important too. But then also you're leaving to come to warmer and better climates during winter time in the north. One of the things that we always have to worry about in winter time in the north are frozen pipes. Mm. Nothing we have to worry about here in Arizona, Mike. Right? So this is new to me. And and when pipes freeze, they burst. Sure. And you can wind up having when when the thaw happens, so to speak, you can wind up having now burst pipes just flooding your house. And that can be an absolute insurance nightmare and an absolute disaster for your your arrival when you come back home. And so having some organization or neighbors that are going to stop in and just make sure while you're in one location or the other, somebody's paying attention. You have a concierge service of some kind that's paying attention to that house and making sure that nothing is going wrong with it. And if there is repairs that emergency repairs that need to be made, that they're taking care of it for you so that you come home from your stay out and that that's all there. And before we go any further, let's go ahead and take our halftime break. And we'll be back in about a minute. You've been listening to Snowbird Nation with your host, Mike Searcy. To find out how you can become a member, go to Patreon, that's P-A-T-R-E-O-N.com forward slash Snowbird Nation. Simply click on Become a Patron to join. You'll receive private investment opportunity, exclusive content, monthly news, and real-time industry updates. Join us every week right here on Snowbird Nation. Welcome back to the show. Thank you guys for sticking with us. We are now in the back half of episode two right here on Snowbird Nation. We're going over the top 10 things you need to do before you've decided to make that migration, as Mike says, to whatever the warmer or better climate may be six months out of the year, what time frame uh, you might be interested in. So, Mike, we left off here at number six. A lot of great information. We've still got three, four more to go. Let's finish up on six and move to seven. You bet. Um, Finishing up on six... Those full service organizations exist. Uh, we can help you find them if that's if that's a, a wish on your part. That's going to make sure to stop in your house, check in on your house, so that you know once a week, twice a week, whatever it might be, bring the mail in if that's part of the service that you'd like. But you know that bird, that fish, that turtle, that lizard, that tarantula, whatever kind of of pet you may have that you don't want to travel with, we want to make sure that you know. They're fed, they're taken care of. We want to make sure that your home is watched and emergency repairs are taken care of. Some of them will go as far as if you alert them for your date of arrival when you come back and forth and give them their their shopping list, they will make sure that your refrigerator is filled and your cabinets are filled, your pantries are filled, so that when you arrive home, it's just like you were gone for an afternoon and you can pick up right where you left off. Yeah, see, this is all the stuff that is so important to do. But as we're going through this list, and I've never been a snowbird person myself, okay. I'm thinking, I never thought about any of this yet. <laughs> so <laughs> this is all things that I can't imagine that my parents, who are now looking at that phase of their life, have thought about. So this is great information, sure. Mike. All right, number seven. Um, we sort of talked about this in terms of mail, but mm-hmm. what about newspapers, flyers, and freebies? Yeah. You know, we can always say, I'm going to just suspend the newspaper delivery if we're getting a newspaper delivery. Right. Fewer and fewer people in the United States are reading newspapers on paper anymore. But I'll tell you what, there's an awful lot of those flyers that people just walk the streets and hand them out. And I'm not going to say that that um, this happens all the time, but there are actual scams and criminals, if you will, that are actually handing out flyers up and down a block so that they can drive by two or three days later just to see if that fluorescent colored flyer is still on the property right? and if it hasn't been picked up yet because they're looking for signs of life in that property. So we want to make sure that if you're getting newspapers or flyers or freebies and we don't always know when and which ones we're getting, that somebody is there and going to be driving by. And this could go back to that home watch maintenance and pet service, yep. but somebody's going to pick all that stuff up. And it goes back to safety too. This is some of the little things that we don't think about how to protect your property, especially since you're going to now multiply own properties and it just becomes double the hassle. Yep. Number eight, probably one of the ones that most of us don't think about in advance. Oh, and sure. It's not something that, um, that I highly recommend you wait until you get to your snowbird location in order to think about, but let's deal with medical care right up front. See, if you're enrolled in Medicare, for instance, you should have no problem finding medical care anywhere in the United States. However, if you're on private health insurance, 
it is important to have these conversations with your current general practitioner, your current primary care doctor, um, to make sure that you are connected and that they know where you're going and that you have what I call a secondary care primary doctor. In other words, some doctor in your snowbird location that you're going to set up with. So should something happen or if you need new medications or should something happen health-wise, those two doctors are already aware and it's marked in their files who the other primary care doctor is so that they can connect. And make sure you check with your insurance company to make sure that whoever you're finding in your new location is specifically under your insurance uh, program and plan as well so that you don't get stung on the back end in terms of costs. Boy, isn't this an important one, too, with everything that's going on in our healthcare system. This is really, really important. And we'll have information up in the private members box on how you can uh, actually look for these type of things if you don't know anybody or have no referral source. You got it. Number nine, smart timers. One of the interesting things about technology nowadays, and it allows us to do things like put lights on timers and thermostats on timers. And in fact, you can even control, depending upon how technical we want to get, you can control the lights in your home from 2,000 miles away. Right. So while you're in your snowbird location, you can turn lights on and off and open garage doors and close garage doors. And and when you say when people say, well, why would I want to open the garage door? Sometimes we're having things delivered. And so we can actually open the garage door, have somebody deliver it, and then we can close it again once they're out of the garage. And so smart timers and smart homes are great things to think about. Should I put cameras in? inside my home while I'm gone on either location Mm -hmm. because that gives me an opportunity from 10, you know, 2,000, 2,500 miles away, wherever it might be, to be able to look in on my home at, you know, constantly as, as it's important to me to do so. So putting lighting on timers and considering security cameras with internet connectivity will provide some peace of mind knowing that your alternate property is in good hands specifically. And it gives the impression that there's people living there. Lights going on, lights going off, the lights off at night, night lights coming on, you know, motion security lights, things like this. It gives the impression people are there. And that's the biggest thing we talk about safety. And with technology nowadays, there's no excuse not to do that. And of course, there's so many advances. It almost seems monthly, Michael, on how this stuff comes out. So it's never been a better time to actually be a snowbird or want to be a snowbird. I agree. Yeah. And, you know, number 10. We this talk, is a tough one. We talk about technology. This is a tough and I'll one. tell you what. Social media is just taking over all of our lives. Yes, it is. Depending upon what generation you're from, you're probably really excited about Facebook. Depending upon what generation you're from, Snapchat, Instagram, Reddit. You know, we're actually, as Snowbird Nation, we're actually connected on over 14 different social media platforms. Did you know there were 14 different platforms? I didn't know. No, this is new to me. Yeah. And so... And, and they're growing all the t- The numbers are growing all the time. So one of the things we want to make sure we're paying attention to is to not, and I repeat that, not get too excited about posting where you are at the time that you're anywhere on social media because if it's these are all public profile sites and people can see, maybe you're just trying to, I want to show the family I'm alive and well and et cetera, et cetera. Don't get excited about posting where you are because what you're actually doing is announcing to the public and perhaps those with nefarious intent that you're not at a particular house, that you're 2,000 miles away, 3,000 miles away. And so if they hit your house deciding they're going to go after something, that you're not close enough to do anything about it. Yes, there is security, but still you don't want to advertise this. You know, it's amazing as technology gets more and more advanced, so does the criminal activity. So keeping up on that and some of these tips and tricks are pretty much invaluable. Mike, I thought these 10 were really, really well put together, especially when I've never thought about some of them or never thought about snowboarding. And when it comes up and you get to that point in your life where I'm ready to snowboard, I'm ready to make that migration or that seasonal journey, this is all the stuff that we've got to put together, and there's a lot more tips and tricks to it. And, of course, as we mentioned in future episodes, we're going to start diving into some more of the specific. And that pretty much brings us uh, to the uh, end of today's se- uh, session. But I do want to point out one thing. If anyone here would like to get a copy of the top 10 hints uh, for snowbirding, 
I am going to put it and post it specifically in the members only access, exclusive access on patreon.com. Yeah, and of course, if you haven't done that yet, patreon.com forward slash Snowbird Nation, and we're going to have more of that information at the end of the show. Mike, this was a great episode. Of course, you can catch us every week, and if you have not become a member yet, you definitely want to do that. There's more behind-the-scenes stuff, and we've got a couple of more tips and tricks that we're going to share in a couple of minutes in the members page, but great show. Happy to be here with you. It's always a pleasure. And it's always a pleasure having you join us right here on Snowbird Nation. And remember, we are Snowbird Nation. You've been listening to Snowbird Nation with your host, Mike Searcy. To find out how you can become a member, go to Patreon, that's P-A-T-R-E-O-N.com forward slash Snowbird Nation. Simply click on Become a Patron to join. You'll receive private investment opportunity, exclusive content, monthly news, and real-time industry updates. Join us every week right here on Snowbird Nation.